Hello, it is Thursday, August 25th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Thursday puzzle today, which means we are going to be uh, engaging with some kind of intricate or ambitious theme. We'll have to see. And the puzzle may be a little bit of a step up in difficulty as well. Uh, in any case, this potentially intricate and ambitious edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Innes, Josh Lucas, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support of this channel. I really do very much appreciate that. It helps keep this series sustainable for me, which is really great, I think. And uh, thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. Thank you for your for your contributions. Uh, if you become a benefactor, like those five mentioned, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And if you become a patron at any level, you um, anyone who does so will get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And it's getting to the end of the week, which tends to be when I do the bonus videos. So I'll have to think about what I would like to put up uh, in the next couple of days. All right. Uh, do subscribe to the channel as well. We are slowly creeping towards 10,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. And uh, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a link under the uh, video in the description field. Oh, that's also where you can find the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. All right, let's get on to the puzzle. It is a Thursday puzzle, as, as stated. This has been constructed by Olivia Mitra Framka and Andrea Carla Michaels. Andrea Carla Michaels is a very experienced New York Times crossword constructor, some 80 or so puzzles, and Olivia Mitra Framka, still uh, reasonably experienced with around a dozen. So this is their first collaboration. We'll see what they have in store for us. Let's start solving. Prefix with particle. Feels though I should be able to get to land on this, but I, I don't seem to be doing so. Uh, as well could be also, I mean, that's the most obvious one. Does that help? Prefix with particle. Antiparticle, is that something? Like antimatter? Rider of the Lost Ark. Is that, I wonder if that's referring to Noah's Ark? Maybe there's a question mark, so there's some sort of pun. I mean, it's obviously alluding to the film Raiders of the Lost Ark, but, uh, but it's going to be some pun dealing with, with reading that, so I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, device for Arachne in Greek myth. So that would be the loom. Arachne who became a spider and, and wove, and that's why spiders do that, according to Greek myth, I suppose. Okay, Nobelist Morrison, Tony Morrison, the author. Maybe this is antiparticle. Rider of the Lost Ark. So what is that? Oh, it is Noah. Oh, right. Okay, I said Noah's Ark, and then it turned out to be Noah after all. So it is the the one of the more commonly used deployments of the word arc. Okay, smooth in a way, you could sand down a surface to smooth it. And sounds like a plan. I'm, I mean, the thing that comes to mind is I'm game or I'm, but with a D, what is that? I'm, I don't know why I can't think what that, what that is. What about this? Buckeye, Hawkeye, Yellowhammer. Oh, I, Buckeye is, is that people from Ohio? That has come up relatively recently. And then is Hawkeye, Iowa? Oh, Ohio. Is it Ohio, maybe? <laughs> I'm wondering if the I-O is shared and then Yellowhammer. Is that Washington? I don't know what a Yellowhammer is. I'm not sure if this is right. Let's look at this down. So these are U.S. state nicknames. These are nicknames for U.S. states um, or people from them, I suppose. I'm not sure which in this case, because it could be, I mean, it could be the, you know, it's the Buckeye state, I think, or or a Buckeye is someone from Ohio, I think. So tear a lot or tear a lot, to weep, to tear a lot. I'm not sure if that's correct. Espouse is to promulgate an opinion, to state it, to aver it, to what, to espouse, to... Hmm. 
And here's another one, pine tree, horn, corn husk, or sunflower. Okay, let's, I think Maine is the sunflower state, maybe? Does this work? Well-used, but no, it's not Maine. <laughs> uh, hmm. Well-used pencil say could be a nub. That's why I think it's probably not Maine. Unless there's something else that I'm, there's probably something I'm missing about this theme. Anyway, this is the theme. <laughs> we found the theme. I don't quite understand it yet. Um, let's just keep looking around. I'm not sure if this bit is correct, but I'm going to leave it for the time being. We'll come back. Assess with up to um, uh, size up. Si yes, you, you, you size something up when you assess it. Place to pick some vegetables, question mark. To pick some vegetables. I'm wondering if that's referring to, I don't know, crudite or something. Like, you know, maybe with a toothpick, you pick up little vegetable hors d'oeuvres or something like that, but it could be something else. Suffix with periodic. Periodical? Is it a magazine? Greek letter, but not the last one. Uh, zeta, I suppose, omega being the last one. Corporation that acquired the Gateway Computer Hardware Company in 2007. Um, I didn't know this, but I'm guessing it's Acer simply based on the fill there. So does that help with place to pick some vegetables? Oh, salad... Bar. Ah, right. A salad bar at a grocery store, say. You could um, choose some, some vegetables. That you, you buy it by weight. Okay, I guess it's not always by weight, but often it is. Disruptive moviegoers, perhaps. Oh, latecomers. How about that? Okay, so Ohio, Iowa... Maybe it's actually meant to be abbreviations? O H I A. It doesn't really look like anything either. I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm not quite. Oh, Alabama. Ohio, Alabama is. The... I mean, that obviously isn't a word. At least I don't think it's a word. But maybe that's maybe that's just the theme that we have to. Inter, sort of interleave these state names in this manner. So we have Ohio, Iowa, and Alabama. I mean, that looks reasonably, that's, that's reasonably plausible. So they can overlap by one or more letters. They don't need to overlap by two letters because Iowa and Alabama only overlap by one. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, deity born from chaos. Is it Erebus? And then spec for computer cables. USB is a a universal serial bus, I think, is the spec for that. Uh, wine container in a, well, this spec is the USB spec, and then I think universal serial bus is what that stands for. Anyway, wine container in a Poe title. A cask, the cask of Montiato. Am I remembering that correctly? Uh, what cats ride around on in some internet videos? Oh, Roombas. I think, strangely enough, that phenomenon has actually been referenced in the New York Times crossword before, believe it or not. Let's see. Lustful. Randy, maybe? Let's look at the downs. Alma mater, right? So someone's, uh, the school you attended. And never in Germany, I think is knee, N-I-E. Smart TV feature. Could be a DVR functionality instead of needing a, a dedicated DVR box, a digital, a digital video recording. Is that what that is? Lustful of rights. It does look like Randy. Excellent could be yes. An antipasto bit could be an olive. So antipasto. So you've got um, your sort of little appetizer dishes, uh, such as olives. And then, oh, I see. To espouse. So to wed. So to to um, make someone your spouse. Right. So that's a different different sense of that word. And then, oh, sounds like a plan. I'm down. Now, why couldn't that... Why couldn't that pop into my head? That's very strange. This looks like Nebraska. Okay, so pine tree. Oh, maybe Maine is the pine tree state. Maine, Nebraska, and sunflower state is Kansas, I guess. Okay, so here we have Maine, Nebraska, Kansas. <laughs> this is very funny. It's been a it's been a while since I think I've encountered. A, a sort of nonsense, putting actual nonsense words in the grid. Um, although it's only been a few days since we had another U.S. geographically oriented theme, because we had the state abbreviations um, just two days ago, I think. 
So anyway, uh, this, this could be a tough one, I guess, if you don't know the states of the U.S. particularly well. Um, I certainly, as it, as it turns out, I don't seem to know their nicknames very well, but it, if you can recognize the names from the crosses, you can pretty much fill it in, it turns out. Mold for a castle, maybe a pail, um, a pail, a bucket at the beach for a sand castle. Home to Maracanã Stadium. I'm guessing that's in Rio de Janeiro. And then Greek letter, definitely not the last one. So alpha, so that, oh, look at that. And it's right under our zeta, not the last one as well. Hammock composition, perhaps. Ropes, you could make a rope hammock. Is that what that wants? Aachen article. I, oh, ein, uh, indefinite uh, singular article in German. So here we're just using a place name to indicate uh, the language needed. And that, that is common in the New York Times crossword. Um, you get it with French a lot and uh, Spanish as well. Okay, sweetheart could be a bow maybe. And Buddhist scripture, oh, um, uh, why can't I bring this to mind? Buddhist scripture is the, um, that would be a sutra. It'd be a sutra. There we go. Sorry. Uh, okay. Butterfly attracting flowers are asters or esters? Asters. I think esters is the chemical compound. I think asters is the flower category. And presidential first name. Oh, Barack. Okay, Barack Obama. There we go. Um, chant for the dream team. USA, USA. I think that's referring to the basketball team, the Olympic basketball team, American. Part of some uh, Arabic names, Abu. There you go. That looks correct. And then, uh, oh, right. Okay. So that also looks like Nebraska. No, Alaska. This will be Alaska. So that's, oh, the last frontier. That sounds like that sounds like a name for, for Alaska. So these are definitely nicknames for the state rather than people from the state, although obviously in some cases they can double up. But I don't think you'd call someone from Alaska a last frontier. Okay, so Montana maybe is the treasure state, I'm guessing, if it overlaps with this N, M-O-N, M-O-N-T, okay. Oh, and Vermont, Green Mountain. Wow, look at that. Four, four overlapping letters. Pretty good. So here we have Vermont and Alaska. Almost sounds like we're just referring to two states there. Stat on a baseball card could be hits, maybe? Is, that, is it as straightforward as that? Something that even I could infer? Begins, starts as, maybe? Uh, starts at, maybe? Not actually sure. It probably does start with start. It's probably how it begins, how it starts. Fruity liqueur base. Uh, slow fruit, um, I think most often known for its use in slow gin. And then do crew. Oh, to do, right. I was thinking this was going to be a pun around a do as in a hairdo, but no, I think it's uh, to, to do crew, to perform the sport of crew is to row. There we go. Oscar and Edgar, those were awards. So the Oscar is the Academy Awards and the Edgar is, I think, an award for mystery writers, mystery fiction, I think. An easy victory is a route. They routed them. It was an easy victory. Feature of many a beehive. Uh, do an updo, do up. Uh, hmm. I was thinking again to do a hairstyle for some reason that's in my, in my head. Uh, feature of many a beehive. I'm not sure. Let's keep looking around. Turnip or beet. Those are, those are root vegetables. They're literally roots. So I think that's probably the answer. Prime time, not sure. Uh, Neplus Ultra. No more than, so the sort of like top of something, the most of something. Not sure. Um, Infernal River, the river Styx in mythology. That sounds plausible to me. And prime time, yeah, what is this? Prime time duty? Not really sure what that means. Um, 
feature of many a beehive, a dome. The plus ultra. Uh, let's keep looking around. Oh, what about this? Oh, oh, here's the revealer. U.S. geographical grouping, or a hint to 2027 and 47 across. All right, so we've we've um, composed all three of our sort of overlapping state theme answers. So what is this? Maybe state goes here. St U.S. geographical grouping. Something state. I'm not sure. A couple of chips, perhaps. M Mars or something is in damages. I'm not sure. Doesn't really seem right. Tessellation piece. Boy, I'm really uh, slowing down, aren't I? Units of magnetic flux density. <laughs> not sure. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. And well, I'll be. G, maybe? Not very confident about that. Flower with a canine sounding name. Oh, dog, dog something. Yeah, that, that I know this, but I can't bring it to mind. Uh, units of magnetic flux density. Oh, are those Teslas? There we go. That looks right. Spotted is seen, maybe. Oh, so so begins is starts on, I think. And Patsy Klein for one. She must have been an alto. That must have been her vocal range. One of the female uh, standard female vocal ranges. Tessellation piece is a tile, right? You could have tessellating tiles that, that interlock in a repeating pattern. A couple of chips, perhaps. A, a bite? Eh, doesn't really fit this. And this does look like state, doesn't it? So a couple of chips per... Oh, an ante. You could toss a couple of, of casino chips into, uh, to the, you know, into a poker game. Okay, cocktail made with gin soda, lemon juice, and sugar. A Tom Collins cocktail. There we go. Um, is it dogwood? Dogwood? I mean, there's a dogwood tree. Is there also a dogwood flower? I'm not sure. I'm not going to put that in because that doesn't sound right to me. Okay. Dairy Queen competitor. Oh, this came up in the crossword the other day. TCBY. And I think I forgot to read this comment, but someone pointed out that I called it ice cream, but in fact, it's yogurt because it stands for the country's best yogurt. So TCBY is frozen yogurt, I guess. And then, oh, tri-state area. So that is um, most commonly used to refer to a kind of tri-state area that includes the uh, New York metro area, which I guess is, boy, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. I'm sorry if that's wrong. Anyway, uh, flower, um, flower with a canine sounding name. Oh, dog rose, I suppose. That looks, I actually don't know that I know that, but it does look familiar. Or sorry, it looks correct is what I should say. COVID test components, swabs is sort of home tests. You use a swab. And general name on a menu would be general so in a Chinese restaurant, for instance. And to have free and clear would be to own. You, you, you uh, aren't in debt on something. You have it free and clear. How ham might be served. Ham might be served on rye, rye bread. And then to scratch is to mar. Oh, that's funny. That's what I, sort of considering that with a couple of chips was Mars, but no. Anyway, prime time, that doesn't look right. Maybe route is incorrect. An easy victory, maybe a romp. Yeah, it was a romp. We had an easy victory. And so new plus, uh, new plus ultra would be apex. Yes, right. Okay, so the the the, the top, the, the the most. Okay, feature of many a beehive. Maybe it is a dome. And then primetime Emmy. That's, a, that's an award, a television award, I guess. Okay, there we go. Put the kibosh on. Nix, maybe? Although, not sure about that. Who done it? Plot element would be the motive. You'd want to know why did they do it? And a windy city airport code. Uh, this is Chicago's the windy city, and the airport is Chicago O'Hare, whose airport abbreviation is ORD. So, um, you know, someone did explain to me why this was. I think it was named after. I think it was the name of an aviator or something. I I actually can't remember. Someone did explain this at one point in the crossword, but I don't recall. Okay, there's one every second, a tick of a clock, and Sex in the City actress uh, Kim Cattrall is an actress whose name I certainly recognize, and then to repeat, you could say, I said, and I item checked by bouncers, an ID card, 
um, for age verification purposes. And then to put the kibosh on is to end something. And indeed, we are ending this puzzle. And the phoenix, like a phoenix from the ashes, is arisen. So with that, we will end. And there we go. All right. That was a fun, whimsical theme, I suppose, in the sense that we've created some nonsense words. There, You do get themes like this sometimes. We haven't had them very often recently, I don't think. We've more had either sort of straightforward answers with things hidden in them or uh, pun answers, that, that kind of thing. But here we have our Buckeye Hawkeye Yellowhammer, which is our Ohio Alabama tri-state area. Here, the Pine Tree Cornhusker Sunflower is our May Nebraskansas tri-state area. Tri-state area. And finally, the Green Mountain Treasure Last Frontier is the Vermont Alaska, Vermont and Alaska tri-state area. So there we go. A very clever uh, bit of theming, relying on the fact that you can apparently find quite a few, or at least a few, um, of these configurations of U.S. states that uh, just sit right into one another like that. I suppose some of them only overlap by one letter, so that would be a little easier, but some of them by quite a few. Um, like Nebraska and Kansas, and then Ohio, Iowa, each by two, or by two there, and then... Uh, Oh, right. Vermont and Montana was the most the, the most notable one with four letters. So there we go. And a uh, I would say that was a slightly more difficult puzzle than yesterday, but not disastrous for a Thursday, I don't think. It was, uh, I think, of reasonable difficulty given the day. Let me know how you fared, though, with the theme or the crossword more broadly. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. So how about that? All right, Michael Lister points out, you didn't seem to revisit the Anne of Green Gables town, which is Avonlea, set in uh, Prince Edward Island, the smallest and most densely populated Canadian province. So thank you for that. You're right, I didn't, I didn't uh, return to that. <laughs> Michael Lister continues and points out, also, eight down rather amused me as a step up, perhaps, which was the, was the clue, is more or less how you often describe the Wednesday crossword. That is true. And I think I actually maybe even said that again today in terms of the difficulty from Wednesday to Thursday. Those are the, <laughs> I do think of the Tuesday to Wednesday and the Wednesday to Thursday, both both being a sort of step up, perhaps, in difficulty. Anyway, uh, now two fairly embarrassing errors. I felt very silly for each of these, so sorry to everybody, and thank you to the two people who pointed them out. John Mayhew points out, PM is not short for Prime Meridian. Of course, it is not. Uh, he continues, living in London, you're virtually on the prime. You're virtually on the Prime Meridian, the line of zero degrees longitude, which patches uh, passes through Greenwich. Uh, PM is post Meridian, afternoon as opposed to anti Meridian. Of course, that is true. That was a very silly error. And yes, I am, I am not far from um, uh, the Prime Meridian line itself, which is in Greenwich, which is technically in London as well. Uh, Thank you for the correction. Sorry about that. And then uh, Cohen another uh, points out another fairly obvious thing here. The sun on the current Japanese flag is not radiating. Yes, of course it's not. It's just the circle. I don't know why I was thinking of the flag that, as Cohen points out, would be the Japanese war flag. So uh, Japan still uses the, um, a version of the radiating sun flag for its naval, uh, naval forces. And I don't know why I um, just got that mixed up in my head. So thank you, Cohen, for pointing that out about the Japanese flag. And thanks to John Mayhew for pointing out the bit about PM, Prime Meridian. All right, moving on. Carrie Coxwell says, the connection between Reno and divorce is fascinating. Reno was the divorce capital of the United States in the early part of the 20th century, in large part because of Nevada's liberal divorce laws and the fact it took only six weeks to establish permanent residency. This encouraged the rise of a cottage industry to support mostly women from out of state who sought divorce, including a number of dude ranches where women could stay and even work while waiting for their residency to kick in. Reno, which became a, became a city in 1901, didn't have much competition from Vegas, which became a city in 1911, until after the completion of the Hoover Dam. My favorite piece of media about the Reno divorce phenomenon is Donna Deitch's classic 1986 lesbian film Desert Hearts, starring Helen Shaver and Patricia Charbonneau. This is certainly more information than you require, but it delights me to share this historical oddity. Yes, that is extremely interesting. Thank you. That makes complete sense. And I didn't, I didn't realize that 
Las Vegas uh, post dates Reno as a city by by a decade. So that's interesting as well. Uh, Ryan Mathiason points out uh, Len Dawson, who played quarterback in the NFL and made the Hall of Fame, was in the puzzle a couple of days ago. He passed away this morning at age 87. Thank you for that um, in memoriam there. And uh, Len Dawson has come up a number of times in the crossword. So hopefully I can remember his name with more confidence this time. So anyway, best wishes to uh, his family. And um, Altfutter points out that a Petri dish, uh, no longer so likely to be glass, fair enough, yes, I suppose they're probably mainly plastic now, is more for the growing of cultures in an incubator rather than inspecting them under a microscope, which could guess, get messy. Fair point. Yes, I suppose when you put them under a microscope, you what, it's the thing with... you sort of put them under in between two panes of glass or plastic or whatever. I'm probably making yet another mistake here, so I should probably stop talking and go on to the last correction, which is Warmonger Gandhi, <laughs> some name, who points out uh, LSU is indeed Louisiana State University, so I was slightly unsure about that. Their mascot, Mike the Tiger, is a live tiger, or seven tigers if you include the past ones going back to 1930s. On days where there was a football game, Mike used to be brought to the stadium to participate in pregame events or greet visitors from a cage near the entrance, but in recent years they've stopped doing that. Mike now stays in his $3 million, 15,000 square foot enclosure next to the stadium. There we go. All right. Louisiana State University. And that's that for the puzzle today, which means that's that for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle when we dispense with themes and transition into the first of our two themeless puzzles of the week. Nothing but solving. The themes just clues and fill. And I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.